Our first request comes this evening from Matthew chapter 10, verse 39. He that findeth his life shall lose it, and he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. We're praying that all who profess interest in Jesus would find their life. Amen. There's a reason to pray for this. All of these requests, you know, sometimes it would, uh, it might appear as though we're praying for things that are obvious. But as with so much of Scripture, it, it's obvious from one vantage, but there is so much more to be comprehended in what we're asking for. The fact that um, someone might think that it's very simple, that it's very uncomplicated and, and without uh, other, other involvements shows that we have need to ask these things because it, uh, we've all had the experience of having this matter of salvation expanded in our understanding to where we, we see more of the scope and comprehensiveness of it as it relates to our existence. It is our total existence, not just a part or something that we do. Well, this matter of finding your life has to do with a, a more complete entrance as far as Amen. being able to comprehend what salvation truly is. I mean, Eternal life is to know the Father and the Son. So to find your life has to do with a fuller knowledge of our Savior and our God. Uh, and it's, it's one of those things that is so large that to say it is to talk about everything that can be talked about. So we can't really go into a particular here. We're just going to ask for this request, that those who profess an interest in, in Jesus would find their life. Now, we all had interest before. Uh, it, it, this is what provoked us to, to be drawn near to God. But now that we've come in, our interest has not waned. It's rather increased. We, we've seen that he's altogether beautiful and much to be desired and worthy of everything that we are. And so we're still, in a sense, as all of these things that we talk about, as long as we are in these earthly tabernacles, until we have gone to the other side and we've attained to the things that are just, they're, they're, we partake of them, we taste of them now, but the fullness of the promise, all of these things are things that we are increasing in and growing in and having need of. So we're going to pray that all who profess an interest in Jesus would know uh, how to, to find their life. Who will lead us in that? Brother Jeremy. All right, next we're going to... Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you, Brother Judah. <clears throat> you have to help me, brethren. Sometimes if it's just right and your hand isn't very high, I, I'm not trying to ignore you. I just really don't see you. Uh, John 10 and verse 9 says, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Our request is that more and more professed believers would experience what it means to find pasture. Pasture speaks not, not just of, of, of ease and comfort, it's provision, how to find what is needful for, for life to be sustained, uh, for, for pasture, what is required for strength, for growth, what it, uh, what it means to, to have a supply that frees us from uh, an inordinate distraction to try to find what is necessary. The good shepherd, he does lead us into green pastures and these pastures can be found whenever whenever things according to this life are not very green if you know what i mean yeah. the, the he he is not uh, he's not restricted or hindered in supplying what is necessary there have been some of our brethren who have been called to 
to walk very difficult paths and suffer uh, extreme circumstances in so much that, uh, well, it would cause us to weep to speak of it. But even there, the Lord can give a green pasture. Fellowship with him. See, we don't have to do what Jesus did. Whenever his sin was put upon us, he suffered being forsaken of God. And we don't have to know what that is. Even, even in circumstances which, which would uh, cause a person to say, well, that can't be born. It, you're not forsaken of your father. And he can give you a green pasture where the wicked one has no access. So this is, this is not just a request for, for ease. This is a request for what is necessary. And you know, sometimes you need a green pasture when things are going well. Because in, in those times, there's, there's a, a draw that, that if we're not careful, we can be disarmed. It's not like we just wake up one day and go, I have everything I need now. I think I don't need God. I'll just stop walking with him. But, but you become kind of like the Zidonians. You begin to dwell carelessly so that you're not on your guard. These green pastures will help us in those to, to know always the pleasantness and the supply of abiding in Christ. So we want to ask that more and more professed believers would experience what it means, see, in all of these experiences of life, to know what it means to find green pastures. Brother Aaron. All right. And then finally, brethren. Oh, I'm sorry, Brother Jean. Thank you. Second Timothy 1 and verse 18. The Lord grant unto him that he may find mercy of the Lord in that day. And in how many things he ministered unto me at Ephesus, thou knowest very well. Mm -hmm. We're praying that we would all find mercy of the Lord in that day. Brethren, the, the mercies of God are tender and sweet to us now. They're, I mean, they, they add a savor to living. They, they comfort us very deeply. The, to be able to have, think of that, God, whom no one can say to him, what doest thou, or change his mind, or turn his way, and yet God is good, mm -hmm. and he delights to show mercy, and he shows mercy to his people. He's a good God, and nobody makes him be good. He's good because he's good. That is who he is. And we're asking that we would all find mercy of the Lord. He is abundant in mercy. God never misses an opportunity for mercy. Amen. He never, never withholds mercy that can be justly bestowed. He's good. But now we want to, to ask that we would all find mercy, which means that we'll be looking. See, in asking that we'll find, we're also asking that we'll be looking for and putting ourselves in a place where we know that God, this is a place where God can show mercy. We want to be one of those whom he can look favorably upon, and he's made a way for that. So we want to enter in more and more experientially into being those that, that it will delight the Lord to, to minister his good pleasure upon us. And we want to be vessels wherein he can demonstrate mm -hmm. the, the glories of his mercies also. Amen. So uh, we, we can pray all of these things with a lot of confidence and a lot of anticipation, knowing the goodness of our God and his righteousness. Mm -hmm. So who will lead us in that, that we would all find mercy of the Lord in that day, which will be the ultimate day. Right. If you don't find mercy in that day, then everything else counts for not. In fact, you'll be judged for, for despising those, 
those earlier mercies and not fully participating yeah. in that in the mercy of that day. Mm-hmm. Who will lead us in that? Brother Robert. All right. 